Do you need good eyesight for your job? Maybe. In this episode of OcuTalk, Dr. Shaminder Dhaliwal will be explaining what occupational eye exams are, why you need one, and how they work. Dr. Dhaliwal? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us from Prairie Eye Care in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, Dr. Shaminder Dhaliwal. Dr. Dhaliwal, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excellent. Oh, again, thank you so much for joining us. I know you're very busy, but thank you for joining us on your schedule. Uh, before we get started, doctor, can you let us know and our audience know a little bit about your background and your specialty? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, I'm Dr. Shimina Dollywell. I'm originally born and raised in, in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I spent most of my life there. I then did my doctoral program out in Chicago at the Illinois College of Optometry. Uh, after that, I spent a little bit of time, moved back home um, in Winnipeg and uh, joined an office called Prairie Eye Care out there. And then it was time for a change and I had an opportunity to come out to Edmonton, Alberta, where my fiance is based out of. And we decided to make the move and we partnered up with Prairie Eye Care and uh, now I'm a co-owner of uh, private practice out here in Edmonton, Alberta. Well, excellent. Congratulations on that. And uh, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, and doctor, uh, for our discussion today, we were hoping you could discuss occupational eye exams. What exactly is an occupational eye exam? Great question. So uh, an occupational eye exam, uh, you know, sometimes it can sound scary because many times when you hear this, uh, many patients that are going to get one are have to pass it in order to get whatever endeavor they're trying to achieve. And uh, so an occupational eye exam essentially is a complete eye exam with some additional testing that's required based on the occupation you are trying to uh, get yourself into. So there'll be certain special tests that are gonna be required that might be specified just for that field or additional tests that we typically don't do on adult um, uh, general com comprehensive eye exams. And uh, they're going to be looking at those things and you'll have to hit a certain marker to pass uh, to be eligible for that occupation. Gotcha. So um, for my for our, my next question, then, uh, if it's for someone who is going into a certain occupation, is that when they need to get an occupational eye exam? Like if I if I'm starting a new job here, that's when I would need to come see you to in order to get this. Absolutely. So. Typically, most individuals who are going to be applying for something won't have to worry about if they need or if they don't. That employer or that course or training course will provide you with the paperwork saying you need to get an occupational eye exam completed. And at that point, you'll then go ahead and find somebody that will do that work for you. Many times people like ourselves, we list on our website that we do do these kind of testing. Uh, otherwise, most people will call their optometrist that they have for quite some time and ask if they have the resources to complete the extra tests that are required for their field. So nine, I would say about 95% of the time, you are gonna need an occupational eye exam right when you are either entering some kind of training program or you are applying to the position. That's when you're gonna need the full extent of an occupational eye exam. There might be other times throughout the whole kind of continuation of that occupation that you'll need checkups and kind of retest here and there, uh, but there's certain things that you only need to get done once and that's always at the very beginning. Excellent. Well, thank you for that information, Dr. Dollywell. And um, my next question would be, uh, what types of jobs require those occupational eye exams? Is, is it certain businesses that specialize in that or uh, what, what type of jobs uh, normally get these exams? Excellent question. So typically most kind of careers that are gonna require occupational eye exams are because what you have to do is visually demanding. Sometimes if your vision is not at a top, top notch shape or, or in the perfect condition that they require, you can make an error on the job that can be devastating in some situations. Some kind of, you know, I'll give you some examples, some careers, and the most common ones are gonna be your city or your provincial or your federal level, and sorry for the Americans, your state, I guess, instead of provincial. <laughs> level uh, emergency services. So things like your police service, um, sometimes fire and paramedic as well too. And then other things like the military are also gonna be things that are gonna require this stuff. Things like a pilot 
All those things where the vision makes a big difference and you making a critical decision between left and right uh, might be you know, a, chain, a game changer. And if your vision is not adequately met in those standards, then that could possibly compromise the situation that you are dealing with because these are all typically emergency level situations you're going to work with. So I would say the most common that we see in our office is going to be for the police force, is going to be for um, you know any sort of things like pilot training or, uh, again, those visual demand stuff. Some other stuff that's not emergency level ones is going to be things like um, trucking companies, companies that are, or those are more smaller businesses now, but I mean, I should take that back. There's corporations of trucking companies out there, but um, those things are going to also require, because again, you're on the road, your vision makes or breaks that situation that you might run into, and you have to make sure that you meet a certain standard requirement. Another one that's not an occupational testing, but you still need to do sometimes additional tests that are similar to occupational eye exams is gonna be for the DMV, the driver and motor vehicle section in which some people will have to do additional tests that they don't pass at the DMV local uh, registry in your neighborhood. So Dr. Dolly, well, how does the uh, exam actually work? What, what's the process like? Yeah, so an occupational eye exam starts out very similar to your regular comprehensive eye exam that you always get. And I'm gonna put a shameless plug in here that all kids should begin their comprehensive eye exam uh, every year. And all uh, seniors should also be getting a comprehensive eye exam every year. And adults that are healthy should be getting a comprehensive eye exam every one to two years as well. So when you go in for your regular eye exam, it's going to start the exact same way. You're going to do the same vision style testing. You're going to do the same health examination, the same retinal testing that you typically do. However, there's going to be additional tests that have to be done. For example, sometimes we'll do additional tests on kids at the young age that we don't do on every single adult. An example of that would be color vision testing, or sometimes we'll do a depth of death perception analysis testing as well too, that many, many, many employers will then require to get done and also filled out on their form to see what level it gets. Because again, that color vision could be a critical component, for example, a pilot when they're in the air. Uh, or if you can't distinguish in colors, then you're not going to be eligible for that occupation. So you're going to start off by doing the same exact style test, but in between there, they're going to do additional tests on top of that. And finally, one other thing that many, many places require is a visual field analysis. And this is not just a simple one that we do kind of as a screening test in your regular eye exam. Typically, this one involves a more larger machine and a longer test that's going to require for us to make sure that your field of vision is complete and there's nothing that you're missing that, could, again, could cost something on the job. Um, and every single occupation is slightly different. Some require more advanced versions of these tests for that one, and others will require the more basic version of that one, and then another occupation will require an advanced version of another one after that. But typically, it's going to be your regular conference exam with addition of a few other different tests that we can get done. Perfect. Excellent information there, doctor. And um, one of the other questions that I had um, with this with this testing that you do with all these different machines, are you having them come into the office? Is it more like I, you have to come into the office and do this, or is it something where you've you've gone on site before and 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 done testing there? Great question. So um, right now we do everything in house. The, again, it depends on what testing is required. There might be certain things that we could go visit and do it there. But many times because the testing is done for people who are applying for this occupation or this training program, whatever it might be, uh, everyone enters at their own pace and that everyone will then go to visit whoever it is nearby to get that done versus kind of having them all grouped it together. Because I, I would say most of the time, if you can't pass these occupational tests that the, that the program requires, you're not going to be eligible for the program. So they're not going to want to bring a bunch of people in and then say, unfortunately, you can't do this because of the visual things that are going on with you with your eyes so we bring everyone in and on top of that some of these machines are a little bit heavier to just travel around on the road they're not as mobile as other which they would be uh but technology is advancing so maybe next time we have this conversation i might be saying a different answer I understand well i definitely definitely understand that now dr dollywall and uh what should, what are you exactly looking for when you go to when you do your occupational eye exams Mm -hmm. So I, I would, I'll say this much here. One of the most challenging aspects of our profession is saying no to somebody um, 
based on some vision stuff. So if we have to take a driver's license away from someone or saying you can't drive because your vision doesn't meet the vision requirements, I would say that's probably one of the more difficult things, difficult conversations to have in our exam room. And another one of the more difficult conversations is to also say that you're not passing this part because if someone's coming to get an occupational eye exam completed by you, they're really excited to move forward in a new chapter of their life, something that could be completely life-changing. And uh, so when we're looking forward, I'm really trying to make sure that I'm not, I'm also a talking to the patients, they completely understand the test that we're doing to make sure they're giving it their best ability. But we're also looking to see um, if, you know, those numbers are met. So I want to make sure I understand the standards that the occupation requires and that that patient that's in my chair does the best they can to hopefully achieve that there. So um, again, it's hard to say there's one specific thing because every occupation is tailored a little bit different, but I would say the most kind of general thing we're looking for is to make sure that when we do the complete testing, that their field of vision is adequate, that there's no sort of underlying medical stuff that's causing their vision to not be those standards there. All right. Well, excellent. Thank you again for that information, Dr. Dollywall. And um, how often should these exams be done? I know like we've talked about when people start new new occupations, they need to have these tests. But is it something that's done like every six months, like every year? I, I know we've, we've talked about it earlier, like you want you want to get it done regularly. Is there a certain time where you go, hey, you need to come in these after six months or you need to come in after a year? How, how often should it be done? Great question. And uh, I'll start off by saying this, that, you know, we kind of briefly touched on it earlier that the full shebang of kind of all the different full tests and all that stuff will typically be done one time at the very beginning when they do start their program or try to apply to the program of whatever occupation it might be. But depending on the results and certain medical conditions, certain medications they might be taking that can then impact the vision, they might need to get it done every six months to a year. But I'll say on a more general scope of things, assuming all things equal, all things healthy, most occupations are gonna require you to do the full occupational test with whatever additional tests that they require uh, a prior to accepting your application into that training or into that occupation. And then they'll probably require you to get regular eye exams every one to two years and have paperwork specifically filled out for that purpose. So if they require your visual, if your visual field or your peripheral vision is important to your career, you might have to get that test done on your regular eye exam as well too and get the form filled out and signed by your optometrist. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you for that. And um, Dr. Dollywall, is there, um, I know we talked about it earlier about how you keep everything in-house, but then maybe later on new technologies, new developments may happen. Are there any new technologies or developments that are on the horizon that you're looking out for right now? Absolutely. And, you know, I'm a huge tech advocate. Tech was one of my kind of younger dreams and, and one of my passions. And it still is. I, I love to introduce technology as much as I can into our office. I used to run a YouTube channel when I was like an 11 year old kid. Um, and it was all about tech stuff. So this stuff always gets me excited. Uh, technology is forever evolving and it evolves at a more rapid pace every single year. There's always new stuff coming up and some things that are going to get me excited for us is is our visual field machine, which is kind of the gold standard that is utilized uh, with ophthalmologists, specialists, glaucoma specialists, people who need that stuff very uh, to have the best results from there. Uh, it's a big machine. It's not a small little thing that you can kind of carry around in your backpack. But now there is new sort of virtual visual field machines coming out, almost like those virtual headsets you see. Uh, I know Facebook has one and, and uh, PlayStation has those ones where you put it over your eyes and you're in a virtual world. They're making visual field testing analysis and analyzers using that technology. So you don't have to have your patient go and sit in front of a giant machine and click a button. You might be able to take this visual field uh, looking machine to on site, for example, or be able to have them sit in the exact same chair and not have to move around in your office and be a little bit more mobile. I think getting to that gold standard level is still something that they're working on. Uh, but you know, it might be there already. It just takes time before that approval kind of leaves across the entire field that this is now equivalent to what we've been using for so many years. So that's something that I get to, you know, that I'm looking forward to. Additionally, I think some new technologies and developments in our profession, not even just on the technology side, it's just how our profession continues to evolve and work. Uh, you know, there's so many hurdles that every profession sees, including ours, 
uh, along the way. And I really think our profession is going to develop into a lot more niche kind of areas um, and inside each practice modality. And, and the reason why I love being on Tom is because there's so many ways you could take your career. And, uh, you know, I, I love what I do. It's fantastic. Well, excellent. We're glad to hear that, Dr. Dollywall. And thank you so much for all the information that you've given us. But uh, before we leave today, was there anything that you wanted to let our audience know about? Yeah, uh, you know, when they say the when they're, I'll say this one last thing here, and and, uh, and then I'll, and I'll let you guys go here, is the importance of your vision. And I kind of briefly put my shameless plug in there earlier, but uh, I'm a big advocate for a profession. I'm a big advocate for health and vision health and eye health. And I think patient education is so critical and we've been getting so much better at it as we've been evolving, but we've kind of fell behind the, you know, behind the eight ball there in which where other professions have really educated the public on the importance of their health. And, and we're now trying to do the same thing. And, and every day, the first thing you do when you wake up is open your eyes to see the world. And the last thing anyone would want is for that to be taken from you. And most, uh, sorry, let me take that back. Many eye conditions are silent and you don't know something's going on until it's too late. And vision is one of those things that many times if it's gone, you can't get it back. And it's something that including myself always will take for granted because it's just so simple, open your eyes up and see. And the last thing you wanna do is not be able to do that. So I just always tell everybody to get your regular eye exams in, 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 on schedule. 80% uh, of learning for kids is back to school season. 80% of learning for kids is, uh, can be up, to, or sorry, up to 80% of learning for kids can be visual. And uh, it's important that, you know, they know that they're seeing the best. It's not making their education more difficult than it needs to be. Um, and then another shameless plug I'll put in here is I'm a big LeBron James fan. So let's get ring number five for, for my boy LeBron. <laughs> well, thank you. Excellent advice, uh, Dr. Dollywall. Thank you so much. And everyone, that was Dr. Uh, Shaminder Dollywall from Prairie Eye Care in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Dr. Dollywall, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.